worship here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ in Crystal Lake. Whether you're joining us today in person, <coughs> smiling faces, or if you're online, we welcome and wish you a very wonderful, wonderful day. First and foremost, oops, little time out. First and foremost, I want to take this opportunity to officially welcome Pastor Bob to our St. Paul's family. And we're doing technology issues again. You know, get those batteries working. We're certainly looking forward to our, for, to our time with him as we move forward. Uh, just a few housekeeping announcements. Uh, please sign the attendance book that's in the pew and pass it along to others. Uh, the flowers this morning were provided by the church council in celebration of Pastor Bob's first Sunday with us. This is a reminder, especially for those that are at home, that this is Sunday is Holy Communion. If you're watching the service from home, please prepare bread and juice and join us in this sacred time of fellowship. And if you did not pick up your cup, just raise your hand and the ushers will bring you one if you need it. Offerings can, <clears throat> again, be received in the collection plate outside, the, located on the table. Or if you wish, you can use the QR code in the service bulletin to make an online donation. If mailing in a do donation, our address is 485 Woodstock Street, Crystal Lake, Illinois, 60014. And further information may be found on our website. Just a, also a reminder, we had our first Thursday coffee chat talk. Uh, Pastor Bob will be meeting every Thursday at 3 p.m. at the Summer Moon Coffee House, which is over by Menards in Crystal Lake. And feel free to drop in as you can. Uh, and last of all, please join us in welcoming Pastor Bob immediately after the service in the Narthex for a very special fellowship time. And I believe that concludes our announcements for this morning. Let us begin our worship. Very special. We're doing a sound check here, too. <laughs> they indicated my mic was not on, but it is on. So is it possibly muted? How are you doing? Uh, that the change that we will experience together is welcome. Uh, there are changes in the bulletin, for instance, uh, and those are intentional. Those are not just changes for the sake of change, uh, but uh, as I have observed uh, the way you worship here and, and added my own little uh, twist, if you will, uh, ultimately that's the result uh, of today's service, and hopefully these are changes that, that you'll roll with uh, and in time begin to uh, actually trust me um, that perhaps I have something to offer that ultimately might result in some changes uh, throughout the process. So you know how they say, you know, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission? Let's just consider that the case here. Um, so I, I apologize and ask for your forgiveness if, if you don't like the changes. Um, but uh, we only had a few days to figure out what we were going to do for our first Sunday here together. Uh, so this is, this is the result. For instance, uh, the musical response after the prayer of invocation uh, is the Gloria Patri, which some of you may be very familiar with. Uh, but you will also notice that the words aren't exactly the way you might remember them. But I always say, sing it the way you know it or sing it the way you remember it. So if it happens to be you want to sing glory be to the Father, then sing it that way. Uh, we offer uh, this particular version uh, as a more progressive way of singing some of uh, the ancient texts and ancient tunes. So, so that's just a little explanation about that. Everything else, I hope, is pretty self-explanatory uh, and uh, that you will kind of roll with it throughout the course of our worship service this morning. 
So as we often say, this is the day our God has made, so let's rejoice and be glad in it and let us worship God together uh, as we sing the gathering hymn, We Are Your People, 594. Please rise in body or in spirit. Let us sing 594 to the Lord. <clears throat> Please remain standing and join me in the prayer of invocation. God, who made us all, you have woven your tapestry in all creation, and your majesty shines forth in the infinite wonder of your imagination. We rejoice in the works of your loving hand, and we give thanks this day for the inherent dignity of all your people. Humble us when we fail to look beyond human disability and diversity, and lead us to bring honor to all those you have created. Throw open the doors that we have kept closed, and grant us the wisdom to make our buildings, our communities, our lives safe places of belonging for all. In your loving embrace, we pray. Amen. he's been uh, involved with leading the children's times. It sounds like my mic is working now, which is a good thing. Uh, and you know, we are all children at heart. So I thought, even if we didn't have any children here this morning, um, that I would teach you this little song, uh, which is based on a story that my friend, uh, singer-songwriter Brian Sergio uh, initially uh, put together. Uh, and it's actually a children's book, and it's, it's basically the title of the song is Wherever Love Is. Uh, the story behind the song is Brian and his daughter, when she was very young, were having some dad and daughter time. 
And uh, his daughter asked, Dad, where's God? To which he struggled to come up with a good answer. And he said, well, God is everywhere. And then they talked a little more. And he said, well, you know, God is love. And, and she finally connected the dots. Uh, and she said, well, if God is everywhere and God is love, then God must be in my heart because I love you. And that's the essence of the song. And, and uh, we're going to teach it to you all. Uh, and and uh, again, we're all children at heart. So, so we're going to learn it together. Uh, and we're going to, I'll sing it through and you can join me, Kristen. Wherever love is, God is there too. God is in me, as I love you. Wherever love is, God is there too. God is wherever love is. You want to try it with me? Wherever. And some of this is based on American Sign Language. Uh, and so if, if you want to join in on the motions, just be aware of the people next to you. Um, and, and it's probably with the kids, we would have them stand up. So you can kind of shorten your arms a little bit and do that. But it goes like this. I'm just going to talk through the, the words. It goes, wherever love is, God is there too. God is in me because I love you. You, and then we wiggle our fingers, wherever love is, God is there too. God is wherever love is. So now we'll sing it. singing, we just do the motions. And then it's a prayer. Amen. Please join me in a prayer of belonging. Creator God, you have made each of us in your image, called us your own, and gathered us as family. Yet, we have chosen make, to make God gods of our own abilities. We worship our own intellect and close our doors to those different from ourselves. Forgive our failure to see your face in our neighbor. God of welcome, Make, Make us, us a people of belonging. Healing God, mend our attitudes toward disability and open to us the opportunity for a richer community. Forgive us for our selfish exclusion and lead us to confront our own discomfort and vulnerability. Move us from pity into partnership and from benevolence into communion. God of welcome. Make us a people of belonging. Loving God, today we celebrate the family you have called together, those whose differences include the physical, the intellectual, the sensory, 
the neurodiverse, open our hearts to those who face challenges to their mental health and to all those whose stories we do not know. Lead us to honor all whom you have created. God of welcome, make, make us, us a people, people of belonging. belonging. Living God, move among us today and keep us mindful that we are a community that is created, claimed, and bound together as we are. Teach us to listen, to speak against injustice, to seek, seek equality, to build relationships, and to become the community of faith you have called us to be. God of welcome, make, make us, us a people, people of, of belonging. belonging. Amen. Join with me now in the prayer of dedication as printed in your bulletin. What weighs us down doesn't just disappear in the wind, but rather lightens because the load is shared. Good Samaritans of our time are willing to put themselves out there. May we each, like the Good Samaritan, do our part to put bandages on the wounds of humankind and be willing to pay it forward with a servant's heart especially those that need it most. Bless these gifts to your glory. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he had come to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave him to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. So which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Well, grace and peace be to you all from God, our creator, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to our God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I have to assume that as members and friends of St. Paul's United Church of Christ, you all, at the least, recognize the name Harold Wilkie. And that many of you know that Harold Wilkie served as the pastor of this church from 1948 to 1954. Of course, during Wilkie's tenure, the congregation worshipped in the building, which can still be seen at the corner of Sherman and Ellsworth Streets in Crystal Lake. And carved in the stone arch over the entrance are the German words, and I will make no attempt to pronounce the German words, which translate to English, St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. Of course, in 1934, the German Evangelical Church merged with the German Reformed Church, and for the next 23 years, it was St. Paul's ENR, Evangelical and Reform. And with the infamous handshake that took place in 1957 in Cleveland, Ohio, and I was actually at that location just a week and a half ago, Public Square in downtown Cleveland, we all together became the United Church of Christ, thus St. Paul's becoming St. Paul's United Church of Christ. That's your history, my friends. And I'm sure, again, many of you know that, but a little refresher once in a while is not a bad thing. The Reverend Dr. Harold Wilkie was born without arms. But from an early age, Wilkie found ways to deal with discrimination. He was barred from his local elementary school and walked several miles each day to another school. In college, he encountered similar treatment from administrators who thought that a man who ate with a fork between his toes did not belong where others could see him. Wilkie ate in the kitchen of the campus dining room. And eventually, many of his friends insisted on joining him there so that finally the administration relented and let him sit in the main dining room. Throughout his life, Wilkie was engaged in advocacy work for people with disabilities, which of course helped set the stage for a movement that ultimately won basic protections for them, for those in areas ranging from employment to transportation. After World War II, 
Wilkie began to counsel disabled veterans and their families. And eventually he wrote four books on coping with disabilities in daily life. Wilkie also counseled by example, undaunted by the many challenges posed by his own physical limitations. In the late 1950s, for example, he actually taught himself to drive with his left foot on the steering wheel. Wilkie obviously couldn't shake hands. The stories are told about how he would put his head against another person's head, in essence, embracing them without hugging. In 1975, Wilkie founded the Healing Community Project to help churches and synagogues alter their attitudes and, of course, their architecture. He worked with this project to help churches and synagogues alter their attitudes and architecture to better include the disabled. He was also the founding director of the National Organization on Disability and was instrumental in establishing its religion and disability program. As a keynote speaker at, a conference, or at many conferences across the country, Wilkie stressed that, quote, all congregations, all schools in essence, all institutions have an obligation to welcome people with disabilities and see them as bringing gifts. Wilkie often gave theological seminars in which he cited scripture arguing for the full inclusion of the disabled in religious life and faith communities. In those days, in those days, it was not uncommon for congregations to balk at the expense of making the architectural changes necessary to ensure access. And I have served congregations who have even questioned the need for an elevator. Wilkie was, of course, quite the witty man. And if the problem was, for instance, the church restroom not being fully accessible, Wilkie would sarcastically recommend that the church remove the main barriers, you know, the door and the stalls, <laughs> and replace them with cheap hospital curtains. You see, then he would get a twinkle in his eye and say, and then the people of the congregation will be so ashamed that they will raise the money needed to outfit a proper restroom. And of course, many of you know in 1990 that Wilkie was present at the signing of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And Wilkie was handed a ceremonial pen from then President George Bush. And of course, he took off his shoe and he received the pen between his toes. And also on that day, Wilkie offered the invocation at the White House and the ceremony that followed the signing of the ADA Act. And he proclaimed that the new ADA law was breaking the change which have held back millions of Americans with disabilities. I have to confess that this is the same message that I offered at my farewell service two weeks ago in my two churches in Winnebago County. I offered the same message at my farewell service, and I'm, I was proud to say then, I'm going to be serving the church that Harold Wilkie once served as pastor. That was kind of a nice handoff. In his obituary, Wilkie is described by his son saying that in his work with disabled veterans, Wilkie would encourage them by asking them to find their third eye to find a new way to look at something. Like simple little things like how to put your socks on or getting around from day to day doing the basic things that we often take for granted, which is not all that different than the work that my daughter does as an occupational therapist. Though Wilkie was not necessarily credited with the, credited with the concept, 
as I was doing the research, I was touched by Wilkie's idea of people trying to find their third eye, trying to find a new way to look at something. And I quite frankly think that Jesus' parable and the Good Samaritan teaches us about something, teaches us about the idea of finding our third eye. Of course, the driving question behind the story of the Good Samaritan is the question of how Jesus expected his followers to love their neighbors. You'd think that would be pretty obvious, but no, people were asking questions, not just how to love their neighbors, but who are my neighbors? And the answer to that question answer to that question of how Jesus expected his followers to love their neighbors is simple. And the answer, by showing them mercy, also known as kindness. That's how we should treat our neighbors, with mercy, with kindness. Now, the Samaritan in the story took a huge risk by helping the victim, especially given the fact that the Jews and the Samaritans couldn't play well together. Jews looked down on the Samaritans, and they were not hospitable to them. To put it bluntly, the Jews were disgusted with the Samaritans. So throw in the fact that the victim of the brutal beating in the story by the robbers was probably a Jew. And the fact that his own people, the Jewish priest and the Levite, were the ones who passed by and left him for dead. But a Samaritan, a Samaritan while traveling, came upon the man and when he saw, he was moved with compassion. The Samaritan found his third eye. The Samaritan found a new way to look at his neighbor by showing him compassion, by lavishing him with kindness, by pouring oil and wine on his injuries and then bandaging his wounds. Have you, ever, have you ever bandaged someone else's wounds? Think about that. Have you ever bandaged someone else's wounds? You know, it's not something you could do at arm's length, pun intended. Harold Wilkie would have found a way to place bandages on someone who needed them. Placing bandages on someone's wounds is a very intimate act. Ask anyone who's ever been a caregiver or a nurse. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. My friends, I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, that we live in a world that has failed in so many ways. By not working hard enough to find our third eye, but the only way, the only way that this world is ever gonna get out of the moral dilemma that we find ourselves in is by finding our third eye by trying to find a new way to look at things. And so we ask the question for our times, who are the ones among us? Who are the ones who act in the most neighborly ways to others? The ones who show compassion. And if this is the only message that you ever hear, it should be sufficient. 
the ones who show compassion, the ones who practice kindness at every level of our existence. Go and do likewise. I always like to offer a little bit of quiet time after our message, especially a message that might hit at the heart of the matter, which I hope this one has. And so as you ponder these things, and as you consider this particular message of us showing compassion, finding our third eye, looking at things in a new way, it requires us to really ponder it in a way that it becomes a so I invite you now to be in the spirit of prayer. And I will lead you uh, in a musical time of prayer uh, and then offer a morning prayer. Every moment when I pray, I know you will lead the way, and may all I do and say be filled with you. Trusting you, trusting you. you would fill us, that you would fill us with the love and the compassion that Jesus spoke of as he taught us this parable, that you fill our hearts and our minds with that which is good, that which is loving, that which is giving and forgiving, that which is generous. Help us to be the people you have created us to be. People who demonstrate and model the love in which Jesus spoke. Help us to see beyond skin color or race or the many other ways that we define ourselves as humankind. process, loving God, we ask that you not only fill us, but that you provide us with a sense of comfort and healing. And so many of us are dealing with physical limitations. So many of us are dealing with health issues that keep us from being all that we can be. 
but in the legacy of Harold Wilkie, may we truly see with a new eye, with that third eye that can help us to see things in a new and different way. And so we pray for our world, for our communities, where we continue to struggle, where there is a level of misunderstanding and hatred coming through. Help us to be mindful of the ways that we treat one another on a daily basis. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Every moment when we pray, we know you will lead the way. And may all we do and say be filled. our prayers, O oh God, incline your ear to us and grant us your peace as we join together now in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we celebrate the fact that we are the body of Christ, that together many members, and not just members in this place, but members in other congregations and in other parishes and other institutions throughout our nation and our world. But the body of Christ uh, is made up of so many. And so we celebrate the fact that we are connected in the spirit as the body of Christ. As we remember uh, the, the meal that Jesus shared with his disciples where he said, I am the bread, or like in the bread is my body. And of course, indicating that when we share in communion that we participate in the body and the blood of Christ. And so that community that we have formed through Christ is certainly something that we celebrate uh, and will do so in this place as we share in the sacrament of Holy Communion together. And we are reminded, therefore, that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. And any time you partake of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after the meal, Jesus took the cup and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my cup of the new covenant. This is my cup of my blood pouring out for you, for the forgiveness of sins and for the many ways in which we know the blood of Jesus Christ, even in our time. And so he said this, and again, repeated those words, do this in remembrance of me. So here we are, my friends. Here we are continuing to remember that night and that meal that Jesus offered and his life as he gave it for us so that we may all be the body of Christ uh, even 2,000 plus years later. And so the invitations have been sent. You have received them. And so you are invited to come from the east and the west and the north and the south symbolically uh, as we come together uh, and share in this sacrament, and we ask for God's blessings upon the elements that you will receive, that they may truly be to you the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our ushers may distribute the elements. Of course, uh, you will have a moment to unwrap them uh, so that we might, might partake of them together. So you already have them. So the ushers were doing their job, even, <laughs> even while I did, I wasn't even aware. Well, then let us join together, uh, if you unwrap, and uh, begin with the bread. I invite you to take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. And in the same manner, the cup of blessing, take and drink.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful for many things. We are especially grateful this day that we can be together in this place and to share in the bread and the cup and that Christ continues to be revealed to us in that way. And so we give you thanks and ask for your continued blessings upon us this day and throughout the week and the days to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing hymn, number 273. Please rise in body or in spirit. Let us sing to the Lord the Ghana folk song, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. forward to joining with you uh, for some time of fellowship and probably a little something good to eat, which we are grateful for. Uh, so once again, uh, it, it is a new beginning, and so we celebrate that together. And may the peace of God abide in you, the love of Christ fill your hearts, and may the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you this day and forevermore. And may you go in peace. <laughs>